This video is going to be a little bit longer in nature because we're going to go over translations of the graphs of sine and cosine. So we're going to be taking the equations that have the period and amplitude altered, and then we're going to look at moving them up, down, left, or right on the graph. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, advice for me. I always sketch the curve with the period and the amplitude changes, and then I actually move it. So I draw two graphs on one single piece of paper. Then I would input the final graph into the lab. That's just a piece of advice. You don't have to do it that way, but that is my suggestion to you. So a horizontal translation happens in the parentheses of the trig function. So it would be sine over parentheses x plus, say, 2, or x plus pi. That's going to be a horizontal translation. What you have to keep in mind with a horizontal translation is it moves opposite of what your instincts will say. If I'm adding something to x, it's actually going to move to the left. If I'm subtracting something from x, it's actually going to move to the right. With these circular functions, the horizontal translation is called a phase shift. And that's because it cycles through the same values over and over and over again. So when we shift it, it's called a phase shift because it's shifting every single point on the graph, but it's still maintaining that cyclical nature. When we look at the value inside of the parentheses of the trig function, we're going to be referring that to, to that as the argument. So if I have sine, open parentheses, x plus pi, close parentheses, the x plus pi is going to be called the argument. So let's look at what a, a single graph looks like. If I have sine of x minus pi over 3 over one period, the first thing we have to realize is we're moving it to the right pi over 3. However, we have not changed the period or the amplitude. So my period is still from 0 to 2 pi. To shift everyone to the right, I would add pi over 3 to 0 and to 2 pi. So this would be my new period values. It's still 2 pi in width, but it's going to start at pi over 3 and end at 7 pi over 3. So if you notice, I've taken each of those five coordinates and I've added pi over 3 to them. Or you could take this 7 pi over 3 and pi over 3 and divide it into four equal parts, whichever method is easier for you. And I'm going to see my pi's here. So if I have pi over 3, I'm going to get pi over 3 minus pi over 3, which is 0, which the sign of that value is 0. If I get 5 pi over 6 minus pi over 3, that's going to be pi over 2. When I plug that into my function, I get 1. So I'm creating those points to plot on the graph right here. Now, like I said, I prefer sketching the graph as it is, like this, to 2 pi, and then taking every point after the fact and shifting it over pi over 3. But you could do it either way. This is an example of how it's been shifted, and that's the method two that it talks about. So you draw the sine curve as normal, and then you're just taking each of those key points and shifting them over pi over three. It doesn't matter how you do it, we'll take it either way. Now if I have three cosine of x plus pi over four, I'm going to the left by pi over four. I've also changed my amplitude to be from negative 3 to positive 3. So I haven't shifted my period. There's nothing in front of the x value. So I'm going to take 0 and 2 pi, and I'm going to subtract pi over 4 from them to get it to move to the left. Then I would divide it into four equal parts, and I would create my table to get my y values. And this would be my final graph. However, like I said before, we can also do the phase shift. So we're going to graph it just like normal, going through our typical five points and move each individual point over by pi over 4. Again, either way. Now, this is where we start incurring a change in period, a change in amplitude, 
and a translation. So if I look at this, I'm going to go from 0 to 2 pi. I'm going to subtract pi from both sides to account for that shift, okay? So it's going to be negative pi is less than pi because I subtracted pi. Then to account for the period change of the 3, I'm going to divide by 3. So that's where this came from. So this is my new one period, one cycle happens between negative pi over 3 to positive pi over 3. The period of this is actually 2 pi over 3. So it's going to be smaller because of that. I'm taking that interval and I divide it into four equal parts and I use the table to get my graph. The same thing we did up here. So I'm taking those points, negative pi over 3, I'm plugging it into my function. That's where this came from. If you want to use the second method, you've got to do it a little bit different. You've got to look at the amplitude, you've got to look at the period, and then you have to look at the shift. So I can find my shift by figuring out solving this for x, if I set it equal to 0. The amplitude would be 2, the period would be 2 pi over 3, and my, shape, my phase shift is pi over 3 units to the left, because I'm opposite, compared to this graph. So what you can do is draw this graph and then shift it. Now, in this case, it does feel like it takes a little bit longer because we're having to graph this, which is already a change with a period, and then shift every point over. So for this one, when you have a period change and a phase shift, that might not be the easiest option. Vertical translations, though, aren't too bad. You're just moving the graph up or down, and it moves in the same direction. So if I plus 2, that means move up. Two. So if I have this graph, y equals 3 minus 2 cosine of 3x, and we're going to graph it over two periods. My period is going to be 2 pi over 3 because it's a number in front of x. My amplitude is that number in front of cosine, so it's going to be 2. It's negative, so it's going to start at the bottom of the graph. And I would divide 2 pi over 3 into four equal values. Once I get those four equal values, I'm going to set up my table. So I'm going to do cosine of 3x, then what is 2 times cosine of 3x, then what is 3 minus that? So I'm plugging in 0 pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 2, 2 pi over 3 for the x right here. That's where these values are coming from. Now remember if you're doing this in your calculator, please make sure your calculator is in radian mode. Once you get that, you're going to plot your points and you're going to see that nice cyclical nature. So a couple of guidelines here for sketching this. You can first find the interval by using the 0 to 2 pi sandwich method. Then you can divide it into four equal parts to evaluate the function to form the table. And finally, plot the points and add any additional periods as needed. So that would be like when they say graph two complete periods. Or you can graph it when it's in this form and then translate it. So this is more what you learned in college algebra. Typically, we graph the absolute value, we graph the parabola, and then we shifted it. So this is more that method. This is where I tend to be really comfortable is with doing this method. But you're going to find what works best for you, and you're going to use that. So here's another example of graphing negative 1 plus 2, and we have a phase shift. So my amplitude is 2. My period is 2 pi over 4, which would be pi over 2. I'm shifting it left pi down 1. So we could start by forming that interval in the inequality, and then we're working to solve for x. Once I solve for x, I get that it's between negative pi over 4 and pi over 4. I'm going to take that and divide it into 4 equal parts. Then I'm going to make my table to get my final y values, and I'm going to plot it. So that's how I'm going to work with these shifts that are happening. Now you can graph these in Desmos, but you've got to make sure that you're in radian mode and 
it's not always going to show you that x-axis with those nice pi intervals. So this is something you may want to do by hand and then check Desmos to see what they did.